Hello and welcome to the Monday, October 30th, 2023 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Couple of interesting diaries from this weekend. First, another example from Xavier about overly large files being used in order to bypass anti malware controls. For performance reasons, a lot of security controls are limiting how much of a file or how big of a file they're going to analyze. So what often happens is that attackers will add uh, essentially garbage uh, to a file in order to make it large enough so it's not properly recognized by various anti-malware products. This latest example that Xavier found just uses simple uh, zeros in order uh, to sort of be used as a padding here. And uh, yes, this does not affect the actual execution. It's really just garbage uh, that's being used to confuse anti-malware tools. And with a Cyber Awareness uh, Month uh, wrapping up in a couple days, we got a related uh, diary by Guy. Guy uh, looked into a quick sort of phishing email that also could be spam. It was kind of nicely customized uh, somewhat here uh, to our website. We often see that. Now, the reason these phishing emails are sometimes mistaken for spam that uh, if you click on the link, you don't always get the uh, phishing page. Uh, there are a couple things that attackers often do, like browser type, and uh, in some cases, uh, only the first click, for example, uh, works and actually goes to the phishing page, and then uh, later uh, clicks just go more or less uh, to a generic advertisement page, which of course then may make people and responders believe that this particular email was actually just a little bit of weird spam message and not a phishing message. And then we got a little bit more details regarding one of the vulnerabilities that uh, Apple addressed in iOS last week. And this was one that leaked the actual Mac address of the device. In iOS, uh, for the last couple of versions, you had the option to select a private Wi-Fi address. And that option is usually selected by default, which means for each network that the system connects to, it picks a new MAC address. The problem was that the actual MAC address is being leaked as part of these uh, multicast DNS or universal plug and play messages. It's leaked as an option that's really just ignored, uh, but yes, that option contains or contains the actual uh, Mac address of the device, not uh, the one that was determined for this particular uh, network. Not necessarily a huge issue, of course, but that's exactly sort of what the private Wi-Fi address uh, was supposed to accomplish, that it sort of keeps more anonymity here when you're connecting to a Wi-Fi network. It's unclear if this has been exploited in any way. Of course, we wouldn't really know because an exploit would be just a passive. And then last week, we also had another Pwn to Own contest in Toronto. And that's, you know, of course, usually sort of one of the more successful and also long running events where uh, actual sort of new exploits are being revealed by actually live exploiting various devices and such at the conference. I just sort of skipped over the results. Unlike in prior years, I don't actually see any exploitation against iOS. I do see some exploitations against Xiaomi and uh, Samsung uh, phones. Lots and lots of exploits against uh, Synology and QNAP devices. Also some uh, TP-Link uh, routers uh, were compromised here and a number of printers that were offered here for attack uh, were compromised by the different teams that participated in the contest. I'll link uh, to the write-up here or the summary uh, by the Zero Day Initiative. Typically, uh, these vulnerabilities are then being reported to the manufacturers and hopefully fixed soon. And Microsoft released a write-up about a threat group that they're calling Octo Tempest. Uh, now, uh, this group uh, is apparently responsible for the MGM breach and a number of other sort of high-profile and very expensive uh, ransomware attacks. 
What sort of sticks out here is, aside from them doing sort of a lot of social engineering, and that's always a good thing uh, to emphasize here, also given again it's Cyber Security Awareness Month, but uh, they apparently are also threatening with outright violence against employees if they uh, don't cooperate uh, with them. Uh, this is maybe something uh, to emphasize in any kind of awareness uh, briefs like how to deal uh, with uh, these kind of threats and also just some general awareness uh, that uh, these threats uh, may be used and uh, that uh, as far as I know there is absolutely no indication that the attackers are able or willing to follow through on any of these uh, threats. These threats may, however, have been sort of made more uh, plausible by including, for example, home addresses of uh, the individuals uh, they're uh, talking to or names and addresses of family members. Well, uh, this is it for today. So thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.